Investor's Perspective on the Marketplace Network. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Do we have a program today? I'm so excited you're watching the Marketplace Network. Of course, you're watching Pastor's Perspective. I'll be your host. I'm Dr. Ken. And with me, everybody in the world knows who he is by this time. We finally got him back. He comes a long way to see us. He speaks all over. He's an author, speaker, lecturer, libertarian. What can I say? I've got the great Dr. Pack here today at our studio. And thank you for coming, Dr. Pack. I really appreciate it. Appreciate you Thank you, Dr. Ken. Thank you. Now, I want to get right in and I want to give you as much time as you need. I'm very concerned, as we spoke last time, about this woke situation, these impact on the world, these new things that are coming up that are very important to understand what they are. Could you clarify this left right thing that's going on and what's really the truth? Well, uh, the other day, uh, when uh, President Trump went back to uh, Palmer, uh, Pennsylvania, uh -huh. where he was shot, sure. he introduced Elon Musk to come up, and his his concern, Elon Musk, now he, he he's the one that owns Twitter or X, yes, so he knows what he's talking about, absolutely, and he says that. The radical left is trying to take away our freedom of speech. Ooh, really? It, he says, and it, and I'm afraid if Donald Trump is not president, we're going to lose our freedom of speech. Oh my it's goodness. a very, very serious thing. And I and you know I, I thought for a second. Well, um, I, this is a this man's a genius. I think we better listen to him. Amen. Because obviously. He has something in mind why he would say that. Yes. Because he does, does, does not just shoot off his mouth. So I started doing research. And, and because it's a new thing and it's, it's in my heart already, but, I, you know, I just have some notes. So I, I want to go through that. Please do help us understand. Um, so what you have is this, the, the woke mob has has also coupled itself to the cancel culture. Okay. So if you say something out of line, then then they will try to get you fired from your position of employment. Oh my god. Or your profession or or your or your your stature. You know, if you oh say anything. Goodness. And they believe that you should you, you you disqualify based upon your freedom of speech. Now, in the first amendment it has, and that's why it's the first thing. You're a lawyer, you can speak on authority, right? I'm, I'm a lawyer, and I, I can speak on it. But it says Congress shall pass no laws respecting the establishment of religion mm -hmm. or the free exercise thereof, or abridging uh, the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people to peacefully assemble and petition the government for the redress of their grievances. That is the First Amendment. Amen. That's the most important. Now, as far as believers are concerned, if we do not have free speech, doctor, we cannot express ourselves in the marketplace of ideas to bring the gospel of the kingdom or repentance or remission of sin, which is the two things that Jesus specifically said we should be preaching. Amen. Amen. So uh, I'm concerned about the fact that trying to take away our freedom of speech, you know, and... Um, and we know that in John 8, 44, uh, uh, Jesus said that the devil's a liar from the beginning. Amen. I mean. That's a fact. And so, I mean, if you look at uh, Genesis 1, it said God created the heavens and earth. And then, and then in Genesis 1, 28, he says that uh, God made man in his image and likeness. Image and likeness. Right. Amen. So we're, we're like him. Right. So if you go to Genesis 3, then the devil says, now if you eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you'll be like God. Now, God already said, I've, I've created you already to be in my likeness. Yes. And then the devil says, only if you eat from this forbidden fruit mm. can you be like God. That's great revelation, yes. You see? Mm. In other words, he was disparaging God that God lied to to them. Oh, I see. Okay. See, so 
what happens is people of the lie, which the leftists are, I mean, I was listening to, uh, and forgive me for getting political, but I mean, you know, if <laughs> if the pastors don't start preaching things from the pulpit, the people are going to be without the proper knowledge when it mm. comes to voting. Yes. And we have election coming up on the 5th of November, That's and correct. I'm really quite concerned about it. But, for example, uh, I just heard, and, and they've come up with some new words. Teach us. And the words are disinformation and misinformation. And people start listening to these two words, and I'll, I'll explain why. But even this morning, Kamala Harris, who before said, well, the people are going to, and she was on a tarmac and they were questioning, she says, well, everyone's going to get $750. And I remember my wife and I were listening to that and I looked at her and said, $750? I mean, you just, I mean, you, you gave the illegal immigrants coming in, you gave them a debit card for 15000 for food. What? You gave them a debit card for $5,000. Oh my goodness. You agreed to pay two years rent. Uh, you give them free medical, and their kids get to go to school all the way through college. Uh, and I don't understand, $750? So now, today she got up and said, well, those who on, uh, on the Republican side who says we're only giving them $750 is spreading the two words, disinformation and misinformation. Oh. In other words, they don't care about lying, so I don't understand this. Yes. Uh, believers, we're not, we are the people of truth. We're not the people of the lie. Yeah. So there's a difference here. We've got to speak the truth. And so sometimes you, and I know there's a whole bunch of believers who say, well, we've got to stay out of politics. I am sorry. We're supposed to seek first the kingdom of God, which is a, which is politics, Okay. It's political. That's a kingdom. Is that's a government, and we're supposed to seek government. Fortunately for us, we have a king that is absolutely righteous. Now, so misinformation and disinformation. That's what's important. So they're combining this misinformation and disinformation into this woke madness that you're involved in. This woke madness. Oh my goodness! And so the moment you now start saying disinformation or misinformation, they're going to say, now we're going to invoke uh, this cancel culture requirements where you lose whatever you have. Oh, my goodness. Now, the, the governor of the state of California has just said that he's going to get a bill passed that anyone who does disinformation and misinformation will be prosecuted. If it's political speech. Oh my goodness. Now, I, I see. The, here's the point. Our first, our first amendment rights of freedom of speech is in jeopardy. If they, if they can say that you're going to get prosecuted, you're going to injunction or whatever they try to punish you with, or fine you because you speak what the opposition of what they believe in. I see. It's what they believe in. It's what they believe in, I and see. they call what we believe in disinformation and misinformation. Then we've lost our freedom of speech. Oh, wow. Now, one of the problems we have, and I'll go with this to make it shorter, is that uh, we have a First Amendment, and I don't know if any other country in the world has the First Amendment, the Bill of Rights, right. where we have freedom of speech. Okay? So... The most diabolical thing that I have found that has just happened within the last couple of weeks. Okay. And it's called the Global Digital Compact. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to what I'm about ready to say. This is not me speaking. I've done the research. That's why I'm, I'm reading it here. So I can be accurate. This is a, a the Global Digital Compact has been passed by every country that's in the United Nations. Okay. That's important. That's fact, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> they want to expand the power 
of a single person called the Secretary General of the UN, where he can dictate to us United what States we mean? can say and what we can't say. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Now, here's the problem. Now, listen very carefully. The Internet is an international communication. And since other countries do not have freedom of speech. Oh, my goodness. And we present an idea they consider disinformation and misinformation, they can prosecute us here in the United States. And what they will do, I'm telling you this as a lawyer, they will have extradition papers filed and have you transported out of your home in the United States of America and taken to their country to be prosecuted because you have stated things that's against this left-leaning woke madness. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm telling you what's going to happen. It is scary. Now, it, why is it diabolical? Diabolical means the devil's behind it. Now, think about that. We know that in Revelation 13, there's the number 666. Well, the number 6 is for Tell us. man. Okay. So, 666. So, first 6 represents man's original creation by God in his image sense. and likeness. Okay. Then the second six now is where it gets negative because that's when Adam and Eve sinned and passed his sin through every descendant afterwards okay. until Christ Jesus comes. If you accept his Lord and Savior, then your sins are forgiven. But then the third six is, see, all this has to do with humanism. Humanism is a religion oh. according to the Supreme Court. Oh, my goodness. It is okay. a religion. And yet they have separation of church and religion, but they but the politicians do not believe that humanism is a religion, even though the Supreme Court said it was. Wow. So they love teaching this whole humanism. But then the the final six six six, the last six, is where man makes himself a god. Oh no. And that's the beast. Whew. All right? And that's his whole socialist agenda. And so what, they, what they're doing is part of the global uh, digital compact. We know that the Bible t- in the end times, the knowledge shall increase. Right. And we know we have AI or artificial intelligence. Right. Uh-huh. And so what they want to do in this agreement, this global digital compact, mm-hmm. a compact means an agreement between nations, is uh, an international panel of experts that will come into each of the countries and talk to the inventors and the, the big companies that are making the AI and get their cooperation so that they can control the language and the restrictions of AI. Oh, no. Artificial intelligence. Okay. And so, uh, so independent international scientific panel from other nations yes. are going to come in and dictate to us what we have with this AI. Oh my goodness. Okay. We've lost our sovereignty as a nation, is oh what I'm saying, goodness. with this agreement. If you stop the speech and control the speech and take away the freedom of speech, we have lost our First Amendment rights. Because they say your speech is only good within the parameters of your country. Your Bill of Rights does not apply to England or France or China or oh Saudi Arabia goodness. or Iraq or wherever. It only applies there. So if you send out this misinformation and disinformation to our country and based upon this agreement that it's a global digital compact and they're going to do it, they'll be able to ask for extradition to have you. Now, how do I know that? Because Brazil has a warrant for the arrest of Elon Musk right now. Oh, my goodness. Okay? Wow. And so what they're doing is embedding AI and other emerging technologies with left-wing social justice goals. Left-wing social justice goal. And part of that is they, they want equal 
equity of all nations, which means they want to come and take away the wealth of the United States and give it to their second world and take away our wealth and enhance the citizenship's wealth in their country. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So, wh why is all this diabolical? Because we know, we, we Christians know, that in the end times, he wants the devil and the Christ, Antichrist wants to set up a one world government, right? We all know that. If he has a one world government, how's he going to control the people? He's going to control the people by saying you all have to speak the same thing. You have no right to protest against me. Oh, I see. You see it? That's powerful. Because then we come after you. Yes. And therefore, your Constitution and your Bill of Rights does not apply to one world government. That's right. And then one world economy, unless you take the mark of the beast, you cannot buy or sell. Oh, my goodness. We're getting there. Uh, well, we're getting there. So global AI, global AI, global AI, hear that? Global AI, not the United States AI, not Britain with their AI and their invention. Global AI is coming to manipulate every area of our society and specifically to control our freedom of speech. And that's what I'm saying is the biggest problem we have today. If they control the speech, they take away our rights to spread the gospel of the kingdom and the repentance and remission of sins. If they control our speech, they will take away the religion and they will come up with a new religion that all you can talk about is this one world religion that they set up. Because they say your religion, according to John uh, 14, 6, which says, it, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and the right. only one, and <laughs> only through me can you go to the Father, is a hate speech. Because you think you can only get to God. Wow. And, and I ain't can get to God if I'm a Muslim. I ain't get to God as a Buddhist. I ain't get to God as a Hindu. No. <laughs> you only get to God if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, period. Amen. But if I cannot say that because that's hate speech without me getting arrested, how can I take the mandate that Jesus said in Acts 1-8 to be my witnesses in Israel, I mean in Jerusalem, and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world if I can't go to the uttermost parts of the world because whatever I say is hate speech? Wow. wow, wow Are you wow. seeing how diabolical yes, this thing yes, is? yes. It is something that I'm very, very concerned with. Now, the next thing is they're going to set up with this compact, this global digital fact-checking of everything you say. Oh, no. And it's their fact-checking that will govern whether or not what you're saying is hate speech or whether it's allowed. So you can, you can summarize this global digital compact means to get... Christians off the internet. They get Christians off of world evangelism. Okay. To persecute the church. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm going to give you one example. This just happened. FCC, which is the Federal Communication Commission, just approved the sale of the largest group of radio broadcasting system in America that was paid for by foreign money. Wow. And the FCC rules say that only foreign money could be equivocated to only 25% of the purchase price. They violated their own rules and they approved it. Wow. I'm hoping that they, they, they have a congressional hearing about that. So it's an unlawful, it's an unlawful thing. So... The globalists are trying to close down all the speech, close down all the off-ramps of protest, and have us line up like, you know, people, <laughs> and you can only say this, and you can only say that. Where everybody goes, I mean, think about it. Everybody's going around now, oh, you can't say that. That's hate speech. Wait a minute. 
I don't care if you disagree with me. My right mm-hmm. of speech means I can say something that's contrary to your beliefs, just like you can say something contrary to my beliefs. That's really good, yeah. That's called freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is has nothing to do if I'm talking to somebody that agrees with me. Freedom of speech is when I, uh, that's invoked when I'm talking to someone that disagrees with me. I mean, our whole, our whole adversary said, they, this could affect the, the, the court where you go in there and they'll, they'll say, well, no, you can't say that. You see what I'm wow, saying? Wow, in wow. Our, and you could mess around with our adversarial system in the court system. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. They're playing with lawfare. I mean, look, uh, they, they, if you look at the, um, all the trials that, that Trump's been through, they, they cut them off. You can't have, say that. You can't have that witness talk. Uh, when when that particular attorney did testify in that one case, the, yell, the judge started yelling, made all the juries leave the room, and then scolded the attorney, said he was going to put him in jail if he keeps speaking when he told him not to speak anymore. And the point is, what they're trying to do is stop the speaking the truth. They don't want the truth. They want the embellishment of their lies because wow. it fits their narrative of their belief, which is of the diabolical system of the Antichrist. Wow, wow, wow. And that's what I wanted to say before. I mean, this could very well be the last election that we have where there's freedom to speak your mind and be careful how you vote. This is very serious. This is what Elon Musk said. He says, we won't have free speech unless Donald Trump gets president. I'll call his name out. I don't care. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm I'm sick and tired of my rights taken away. I'm sick and tired of this whole woke agenda and madness. I'm sick and tired of the, uh, you know, this, the the cancel culture. Mm. I'm sick and tired of people coming up to people just because they're Republicans and tell them, you can't eat here. Get out of my, get out of my restaurant. Wow. We come up and attack people and, and this kind of thing. Uh, this is America, the land of the brave, home, you know, home of the brave and the land of the free. Amen. If we can't practice our faith, if we cannot practice our beliefs and speak in a discourse, in a public debate uh, without being totally ridiculed, I mean, look at all the drive-by media. Just, I mean, they, they, they all. If you listen to them, and some of them have brought this up, if they want a particular narrative, all the people say it, the same thing in all the different channels. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that? It's ridiculous. Uh, they're just talking heads. It's time for us to wake up. We have the truth. Isaiah 33, 6 said, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times and our strength of salvation. We need a wisdom from above. We don't need the wisdom of this world, which is uh, demonic. We, it, we are in warfare right now for our freedoms. Warfare. And uh, there's, there's a stronghold that's upon our nation right now, and people are falling for it. Get out of your fifth grade thinking and graduate at least the high school level and get some college ideas in your brain and in your mind. Allow yourself to be educated with what is happening. Where the Marxists are taking over our country and we got to stop it. It's time to wake up. It's time to start becoming a prayer warrior. It's time to speak as leaders of families to stand up and say, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. All that said, do you believe it or not? Check it out and see for yourself. What do you believe? If you're in agreement in the comments, say amen. If you're not, check first before you say, I don't agree because. Yeah. And I want to give you a happy ending here, even though that was a little, I thought it was perfect, but some of you might thought it was a little stir. Maybe you're on one side or the other. I'm not saying one or the other. I'm just saying we got to know the truth. That's all I'm about, the truth. What is the truth? You have to look it up. 
Here's a libertarian who's been studying for 50 years, who's been a, a minister, a lawyer. I mean, I don't know who else to bring on to bring this to light more than he, and that's why he's here. Speaking of Dr. Pack, real quick before we close, I want to give a shout out to his new book out. Dr. Pack, please, it's right there on the screen. And, and you got to take the test. This will really wake you up about money. Please, will you, what's the name of the book? First off, yeah, it's it, it, it's called the the uh, personality traits of money. And where can they get it, real quick? You know, in Barnes and Noble, they get it on Amazon. All the major, all the right? majors, yeah. And, and what's uh, it about? Why, why should we buy this? Why is it so interesting? Tell us a little bit about the beginning. What is money? <laughs> Well, money is, well, there's three. You know, there's wealth, which are things created by God. There's, there's riches that are things, investments created by man. And then there's money, which is a medium of exchange. But uh, where did money come from? It came from, from my research, from the sacrifice of animals. Did you hear that? Wow. And I, I showed that, and I have all the research for that. Uh, and so some people would have sacrifice where you eat a lion for bravery, you eat an antelope for speed, or you eat a, a bull for strength. And, and they, they, people would participate in this thing. Everything that was regarding money has a spiritual significance. We even have, in God we trust on our dollar, don't we? Yes. And so yeah. there is a, always a spiritual significance. And, and Jesus said in Matthew 6, 24, you can't worship God and at the same time worship mammon. Mammon's another word for money. Because mammon is a god, mm. a false god. And so you got to be careful that money doesn't become an idol. So one of the things I've done in this book is to show personality traits. I have people who have personality traits and they try to use money to enhance that that need that to to enhance that personality traits that they have, such as I want to feel safe, so I got to I got to put all this money in my savings account. I, I got to be really a spendthrift and and not spend all of my money. I got to make sure that I have enough in my old age or whatever. And all that stuff is good, but if you if you in the meantime if you don't live life and all you do is save. You see, or you take people that that are control are power mongers, if you will, and they use money to gain power over people and and over things. Are are people who want to be free? You know, uh, oh man, I just want money to be free. And so those kind of people go out and say, hey, I I don't want a job nine to five. Amen. That's slavery. I, I want a, a job that's a commission. I help sell real property and get a commission, or or be a stockbroker where I get paid by commission only or something. You know. Yeah. Or somebody who wants to to be ro uh, have a romantic attachment, you know, they're beautiful people. I just want to look beautiful, uh, that I can be attracted to a very wealthy man or a woman or a very wealthy uh, a woman or whatever. And there's all kinds of categories where people are what well, we call them gold diggers. <laughs> and Good you know, Lord. you know, our only our age group would know that. And Go so, ahead. and then you know, and then there's also people who want a lot of money so that they can. Uh, be uh, have a magnetic attraction to people. Oh well, that's good. So, but there's a lot of subcategories. So yeah, this book is so much full. It's uh, I spent 2,200 hours writing it and doing all the research. It has all the documentation. I mean, even talk about Hitler being uh, somebody who's uh, who who wants to be um, have freedom, you know, and and they're protesters. And you'll be surprised how the connection is there. And, and so, um, and I talk about Bernie Madoff and, and the Ponzi, who was a, an Italian guy who ripped people off back in the 1920s. All these people there in the Rothschild and the Rockefellers and DuPonts and how they all fit in with their personality traits. And you'll be surprised. You'll be, and then I have a chapter just why do the poor stay poor and why do the rich stay rich? And by the way, what are their similarities between the poor and the rich? Well, both of them don't work. <laughs> one's Isn't that good? Lives off of the state. And one's lives off of his money that he has invested. Yeah. So it's a it's it's a very unique book. You've ne you'll never have read anything like this. But I'll tell you, once you take that test. And you realize, wow, I guess I do have a problem with money here. 
And then once you start studying all these, different, and then pray about it and have the Lord to, deli- you know, transform your mind so you don't have those same personality traits or the need to have money to be enhanced. But now you're enhanced because you're a child of God. Then then you get rid of that that bad puppy in your life. But there are people who are enslaved to money. They get up every day. I, I, I used to be on the missionary field, and I asked one of the members when I had the church. I was a pastor of a church for five years straight. And, and I said, man, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to Mexico. Can you, you would you like to go with me? And he said, well, pastor, I have to see what the money says. I said, why are you listening to money? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you listen to the Holy Spirit? And you go, well, I have to see what the money says. And I go, okay. Just think about what I just said. Wow, that's powerful. That yeah. Powerful. yeah. Why do we need this? Real quick, I don't want to tie up too much time, but I want to give Dr. Pack. It's so crucial this season, no matter if you're seeing this, we're actually right here on the 10th day of the 10th month. 24. Whether you see it next week, next month, next year, 10 years from now, it doesn't matter. It'll be an important part of what Dr. Pack said. Isn't it interesting uh, that he has spoken this word at a time like this? Why do we care about the book? It's interesting that we all have to have money, but we, money doesn't have us. But if you'll Amen. read the book, it'll give you a revelation of how money started and how you can get caught up. So because of lack of maybe knowledge, Isaiah 4, 6, you might have not known what it was, that what money, Dr. Pack brings that down to us so we all understand. He writes it that even I, a a 10th grade dropout, can understand what he's saying. (laughs) So I want to encourage you. It's 25, 30 bucks. I can't remember how much it is. Uh, around 25. Okay. I got an autograph picture. If you want that, you can ask for your autograph uh, copy too. But the book, if you buy that, it does three things. One, it helps Dr. Pat go to places that can't afford to have them come out or can't afford to have them. He doesn't care about the size. Believe me, when I first started some of my meetings, I only had five people, and he came for free. And when I had 100, he came for free. And he always prayed for everybody, and he didn't leave till 2 or 3 in the morning. And he had a uh, not only a church thrown at night, but also he was running his own business as a lawyer, and he had to get up at 7 in the morning. I mean, it was rough, but he did it. So what I'm saying is give him an opportunity to go out and help others learn. Help this book get out there and let us be more inspired what God is telling us how to use money. Wealth is important. There's nothing wrong with wealth. We should be wealthy. But do it God's way, and the book will explain. That's the quickest way I can say it. And don't forget the test. I can't stress this enough of anything I've ever said. you got to take the test. Buy it for just the text and nothing else. 25 bucks. So you skip lunch. Just one time. But you pass around the office. I'm telling you, you have many things to talk about for months to come. Because you'll see as you read it, study it. And this will change your point of view of what money is. But when you take the test, you go, hey, I bet that person at the work is this person. I bet the boss is this. I bet this is that. And so on and so forth. So it'll give you a good understanding of who you're working for, working with, and who's working underneath you. So, Dr. Pat, because of time, will you close by praying for the people, not only about our situation that's going on with all the politics, but about money and how they could steward it better? Yes. Yes, Father, we just, we live in America, the land of the brave and uh, the home of the free. And, uh, you know, we all have to deal with the issues and the, the major issues we have right now is that inflation is over 20%. Mm. Food costs are going up outrageously and the fuel costs. And uh, it's like just everyday people like us are having problems. Just trying to, you know, we at the end of the month, we have no money left. But we're just trying to hang in there. And some of us are living off credit cards. Amen. So, Lord, I just pray that that. What what happens is that the Lord it blesses you. Even if you get this book that Dr. Cannon and I were talking about, this personality traits of money, it will give you secrets 
where you can start saying, well, wait a minute, I don't have to get this. Maybe if I clean out my garage. Teach that. Teach that. If, you know, I could sell that second car and don't ever drive anyway, I can get out of debt. Good word. Lower my overhead. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do, and we just don't do it. And so then another week goes by, another month goes by. Here we've got Christmas coming up and, and, and another year older. And without changing, I mean, they're one of the principles, Lord, I just, and put this in the heart about the, the, the issue or the, the concept of grub steak, that if you just put a certain amount away and never touch it, you, like 10% of your net salary, put it over there into a special savings and just, and then eventually you'll have 50 or 70,000, maybe a hundred thousand. You might be able to buy a down payment for a duplex where it becomes rental property and then you're off Good and word. running. So now you can create a wealth of assets. There's a lot of things you can do that you don't think about. This, this book will reveal to you. And so, uh, um, it, it's full of wisdom, and, and my other books that I have, that Ministry of God's Business Servants, has tremendous amounts of wisdom in it that's never been taught. And so I you got to have both, is what you're saying. You really need both. Okay. Yeah, they need both, and and uh, I I will be continuing writing more books. Uh, they're all they're all they're all different. Uh, people want to contact me. You can. That's that's. Um, Right there on the bottom of the screen. And right there on the bottom of the screen. I think the pictures of the books, some of the books we have. Right up here. So, uh, you know, people, I, I, I'm not in this thing for the money. To be honest with you, these, these books cost far more than I'd ever get from them. Unless they became a bestseller, you know. I don't do it for that. Just like as a lawyer, I, and my wife who's sitting here will tell you that there's not a day that goes by I don't get a phone call and I give away free legal advice and that's just that's just who I am because my business is my ministry and in my profession I've been an attorney now I've gone on 51 years and that's in the book and that's in the book and so I a lot of what I write in the book is from personal experience over the last 51 years uh, it's a study of the Word of God that I study every single day my wife and I would go outside and have a coffee in the morning and you know we get I always tell I got a download today, which means I got a download from the Holy Spirit. So, Father, I just ask you to bless these people. Let them be seekers of truth. Because in John 8, 31 and 32, if my word is in you and, and if you're in my word, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. People are in bondage. These books have truth in them. They will set you free. But you got to take the step. You got to take the step to seek that truth yourself. And I just pray for you that you'll be seekers of truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, why do you want to get the book? He's got all this research and time into it. You don't have to study the Bible. You don't have to go to get a, a BA degree or don't have to go to a business school or whatever. It's right here in the book. Get both of them. They both complement each other. They do. And you get scripture. You can stand on it so you know it's true. Everything he says is true because it's right from the Bible. So everything he's teaching is not because he thought of it. It's all right there in the Word of God. So it's easy for you to dig. Just this one book, 25 by, is that 25 means blessing. Hear me. It's time to sow a seed, not only for you and your family, but let him go out to different areas of the, uh, the country that would that can't afford him to go, that he can go in there and, and teach and encourage the people and give out his books or sell his books or whatever. If you want a personal word, I highly recommend you use that cell. Say, Dr. Pack, sign it, and I need a word in there, and he'll do it. <laughs> I've known him 21 years. It means a point in time. I'm telling you right now, he has one of the most prophetic voices. This book is very prophetic. Both of them, they're both up here on the screen right now. He's got several lovers. He doesn't write it for himself. He does it for you. Believe me, he's a full-time lawyer. I barely get a chance. I've known him forever. I can barely get him on the phone myself because he's so busy with not only the, his business, studying God's Word, his teachings, his traveling, but more importantly, his books. It's for you. You really need to get this. Now, if you just want to sow a seed, please do so. That will take you a long way. I'm telling you, if you sow in this kind of ministry, think of the prosperity you'd get. 
if you sewed in. But make sure you get the book. You might as well just go ahead and get both books. Maybe he'll make a, a deal later on down the road where you can get both. What about now, Doc? If they buy two, what does that mean? They call, contact you. Will you give them a deal? Well, I'd have to buy the book first to give them a deal, otherwise, because you go out to Amazon, Amazon gets their profit. Well, he'll, say, he'll make yeah. sure he signs it. That'll be worth something for sure. Yeah. And he'll give you a word on it. That's, I'm telling you, that's worth it enough. Do this for me. Make sure you do it right now. 10, 10, isn't that interesting? 10 means divine order. Now, watch this. We're on the 10th month, the 10th day. Double means double witness. We're witnessing what Dr. Pack has prophetically spoke out to you, the viewer. It's time to research this, time to study it out for yourself, but more importantly, get the books. You really learned a lot. He gave you a two for one tonight. It, not whatever is going on in the world, plus how to steward the money and the other book that he mentioned about business. You've got to get that one. Uh, he's been he's been teaching that since I've known him for 21 years. He's just perfected it a little bit more, and he'll keep on teaching it. Until next week, the great Dr. Nova Pack. I'm Dr. Ken. We'll see you next week on Pastor's Objective. Pastor's Perspective on the Marketplace Network.